previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. An adult in Rockingham County and a child in Carroll County have each been diagnosed with the Powassan virus, which is transmitted by the bite of a black leg dick. Tick, excuse me. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Dan Shepard, Nicole Avon, and music from Boy With You with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. From our secret headquarters in Hollywood, where it was uh, it was an unseasonably and unreasonably hot day today. It was 93 degrees. It was so hot. We got a warning this morning from the LA branch of the National Weather Service urging residents of Southern California to drink plenty of fluids and avoid caffeine and alcohol. I'm not sure if they're trying to save us from heat stroke or convert us to Mormonism, but it's of concern. <laughs> hey, speaking of hot, it was Golden Bachelor night here on ABC tonight. We have a bachelor who's 70 and a president who's 100. What a time to be alive. If you haven't seen this show, The Golden Bachelor is very similar to The Regular Bachelor. Main difference is instead of a hot tub, they have a, a walk-in bathtub. But um, <laughs> tonight, they talked a lot about getting up to pee in the night. They talked about, <laughs> it's not a joke, whose knees could handle the top bunk. <laughs> this guy, uh, Gary, bonded with one of the women because they both have hearing aids, which, he might want to turn off, because on this version of The Bachelor, there's a lot more complaining. Guys, do the rose ceremony and chairs. You have people in here 60, 70, and above. Do the rose ceremony and the chairs. And turn up the heat. It's too cold. Now, now turn down the heat. It's, I'm too hot now. You know, the breakout star of the show last week was, I don't know if you saw, my own Aunt Chippy came out of the limousine. And she has been, um... Single lady. She's been single since she killed my Uncle Frank. She's uh, 84 years old. And it turned out Aunt Chippy was a little bit too golden for this round of The Bachelor. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Hi. This ain't no 80-year-old club. <laughs> now the party has started. Let me tell you something. I don't belong here. Those ladies are really something. Look at this one. Oh, I oh, know. I'm in the wrong place. The right place for Aunt Chippy is in front of a slot machine with two cigarettes in her mouth. But <laughs> it was a long night, and she didn't quite make it all the way through the rose ceremony. Aunt Chippy. Hi. Hi. Are you doing okay? Did I get a rose? No, I just went through the rose ceremony. Unfortunately, I didn't get one. So Is I it just get a pedal? All the stems, all the pedals have been handed out. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Did, you have, go. did you have a good nap, at least? I did. I'm going to take the couch home. <laughs> at her house, the uh, sofas are covered in plastic, so that was a real treat for... Maybe the most dramatic thing that happened on The Golden Bachelor tonight was the promo for next week's episode of Bachelor in Paradise. The serious medical emergency. I am going on nine days of no pooping. We still haven't had movement. We'll have to live with almost like a poo baby. <laughs> Sunrise tomorrow morning, walk we'll to the operating room. My mistake it. Don't want to leave paradise. I got your poo poo platter right here. She's putting food in, but like no food's coming out. I'll do a couple of these. I'm going to get it out of you, I promise. It's all next week. <laughs> it's, it's all next week? Maybe just summer next week will be. All next week on Anima Island. What kind of show is this? What, and did that turtle know what it was signing up for when it... <laughs> we got a whole new focus on incontinence this year. The Golden Bachelor is a big hit, though. The show has been so uh, strong ratings-wise, ABC has already given the green light to another spinoff. From the producers of The Golden Bachelor... I'm going to meet the woman of my dreams. ...comes a new search for love. One downward dog looking for his forever mate. 24 barking beauties in the most dramatic doggone bachelor season ever. Who will get a rose? 
And who will get a bone? Will it be Daisy, Bella, an old comforter, a Roomba, his own bed, this man's head, a lazy boy recliner, a giant stuffed bear, this Lithuanian grandma, or absolutely nothing at all? The fantasy suite is off the leash. The Golden Retriever. Love is a bitch. Only on ABC. See, that's, see, that's why we needed the writers back. But speaking of speaking of horny dogs, Florida Representative Matt Gates is the least popular guy in Congress right now. Ted Cruz must be glowing because uh, they hate Ted uh, Matt Gates. Matt Gates this week led the charge to remove fellow Republican Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House, and now several GOP lawmakers want to get rid of him. Unfortunately, you can never really fully get rid of Matt Gates. You can only suppress him temporarily with Valtrex. But his <laughs> colleagues are so upset, they're throwing it all at the wall, including this explosive allegation from Senator Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma. This is a guy that didn't have, that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there's a reason why no one and the conference came and defended him because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and, and, and chase it with, um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. And now you tell us? <laughs> Mullen wasn't the only Republican piling on. Mark Short, former chief of staff for Mike Pence, told Jake Tapper of CNN he doesn't believe Gates is in Congress for the right reasons. I think that what's what's concerning is we really are $33 trillion in debt. Yeah. We do have a border crisis. 100%. There's a lot of issues that need to be solved. Yes. But the people who were masquerading as fiscal conservatives really, really aren't, Jake. I mean, Matt Gates, it, it, to say he came here as a fiscal crusader, it's more likely he came here for the teenage interns on Capitol Hill, to be honest. Wow. Wow, they were feeding on it themselves. It's like alien versus sexual predator in the... <laughs> It's unclear whether or not Republicans have enough votes to kick Gates out of their conference, but we do know the hunt for the next speaker is on. The leading candidates are Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise. I don't like either one of those guys. Why not Lauren Boebert as Speaker of the House? I mean, we saw at that Beetlejuice musical, she does know how to reach across the aisle. <laughs> and some of the... <laughs> Some of the MAGA wing of the party is floating the idea that uh, Donald Trump would make a great Speaker of the House. Turns out you don't need to be in Congress to be the Speaker. Trump hasn't confirmed whether or not he'd be interested in the job, but he did announce he already won the vote. It was a landslide. <laughs> Bigger even than a landslide. He didn't attend his fraud trial today in New York. It reportedly he got frustrated yesterday and left halfway through as if it was Don Jr.'s 10th birthday party or something, but... <laughs> Of course he left. Did we actually expect him to sit there and listen to testimony in court day after day? The man has the attention span of a baby goldfish swimming in a bowl full of four loco. He's not gonna... <laughs> and on top of everything else, we have a new report from ABC News that says Trump shared classified information about our nuclear submarine capabilities with some random guy at Mar-a-Lago. Apparently he blabbed a bunch of top secret information uh, to an Australian billionaire who then shared it with a bunch of people, including more than a dozen foreign officials, including several of his employees and a handful of journalists. He told at least 45 people. I have to say, honestly, we owe a major debt of gratitude to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Be literally the only time Donald Trump's mouth is not actively destroying America <laughs> is when he has a drumstick in it. And I say thank you, KFC. This is our first week back uh, to work after the strike, and someone who had a really rough go of it while we were away is Mr. Mike, Mike Lindell, my pillow, the my pillow guy, who seems to finally be running out of money, says the IRS is trying to shut down his call centers, and the lawyers defending him in that $1.3 billion case Dominion filed against him have apparently had enough. 10 minutes ago, um, all the lawyers we have for my pillow and uh, myself in the lawsuits with the lawfare with Dominion and Smartmatic, they uh, just filed in federal court that uh, to drop uh, to drop us as our attorneys, and um, and this comes from uh, 
the lawfare, basically, and from the media, the attacks on my pillow, what American Express did, uh, to take it, just devastating our credit. And we, I, we have to, I, I can't pay the lawyers. We can't pay. There's no money left to pay them. And they won't accept pillows as payment instead? What kind of lawyers are these? It, that, to me, it's just terrible. It's a sad day in this country when a patriot like Mike Lindell is being held accountable for trying to help overthrow an election while Dominion voting machines are still out there wandering the streets. In order for us to keep full capacity at, um, at my pillow, what do we have to do? Talk to us. We need, we need the support now more than ever. And you guys have done it. There you have the, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, and, and amidst all this devastation, my employees are counting on everyone getting our great USA products, the MyPillow 2.0. They're down there working right now. Um, we've got this on sale, $39.98. You've got the towels, the six pack towels, $39.98. Uh, that's not even forty dollars, thirty nine ninety. If every person in America could just buy five hundred thousand towels, Mike Lindell will be okay. I'm afraid that the future is not doesn't look bright for Mike. He claimed my pillow lost hundred million dollars after a bunch of stores dropped his products. He had a liquidation sale at his factory. He sold his sewing machines. He sold 19 massage tables. He sold his trucks. He sold a lot of stuff. So I thought it might be nice to check in to see how he's holding up. And uh, uh, Mike Pillowman, how are you there? Can yep. you hear me? Yep, yep. Hello, hello. Yeah, this Mike? is Mike Pillow with Mike Lindell. What's your problem, Mike? man? They ain't lumpy. No, those are them's his patented slumber chucks. No refunds. Mike, Mike. Uh, what are you doing, Mike? Yep. Who is this one? It's Jimmy Kimmel. Yo, Jenny Candle, why are you calling no, me? No, I'm not on the phone, Mike. I'm here. I'm on, uh, Hol yeah, Holy TV. cripes! Where have you been? I haven't seen you in ages. I, yeah. I thought they did a cancel culture on you like they did to Tupac Shakira. No, no, Mike, they didn't do a cancel culture. My show was off the air because of the writer's strike. Oh, uh, is that why I haven't been seeing no new episodes of Joni Loves Chachi? No, I don't think that's that's why. I think it's because that show went off the air like 40 years ago. But holy baloney! Time really flies when you spent most of the 80s sniffing booger sugar with Tila Tequila and Chuck Sheen. Yeah, that's what they say. It's... Hey, I wanted to ask you, sorry about hey, this fire sale hold you had. Me. I know. Yeah. Who, who, who's in the head of fire sale? You said. You, you, you sold everything in your factory. How did the sale go? Terrible, Jim. Nobody can afford to buy a wheelbarrow full of dead pigeon feathers anymore on account of this Bidenomics, which is why for a limited time you could get 80% off using a promo code wheelbarrow full of dead pigeon feather. Uh, I so also sir, so you're trying to sell 19 massage tables. I'm wondering why a pillow factory needed 19 massage tables. Be because in the state of Minnesota, if you have 20, that make you register as a brothel. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, that well, makes what sense. What now? Your pillow caught fire? Yeah, well, of course it did. It's highly flammable. Stop smoking, you dumb dumb. Hey, okay. we the mic. We, <laughs> Mike, oh. what's what's going on over there? What did that guy Dominion do? Dominion sent their goons here, and now they're ransacking everything that's not glued down. Oh, Good no. idea. I'm okay, sorry. I'm, wait, what are you doing to your computer? <laughs> oh, Mike, don't drink the glue. Do I not... have to. I need the vitamin G. Well, no, you, I don't think you do. Hey, I think those people are probably repo guys. They're probably taking the stuff because you owe money. Well, no, 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 you can't take that. Nope, no, we're not taking that. I won this one fair and square. What is that? I won this down in the Lake Winnipegosh's dog eating contest. You mean hot dog eating contest? Well, of course they're hot. You gotta cook them. You ever try to eat a cold Dalmatian? No. That's a good way to get hookworm right there. <laughs> oh, Mike, I also read the American Express slash your line of credit. No, oh, no, no they... that's all square. Now I do all my bacon with Mexican Express. Oh, I've never heard of Mexican Express. It's great. You make a deposit, you just hire, you gotta hire a coyote to get you across the Mesa to Lupe. And don't forget to bring a tree for the coyote or it'll eat your dingle majig. Oh, wait, it's an actual coyote that... The plates, the plates. No, I paid good money. These are my Jan 6 commemorative plates. Oh. I just got the one of that Viking fella taking a squatter on Speaker Pelosi's top drawer. Oh, they're beautiful, they're Nobody's beautiful. Nobody's gonna yeah. get this. You this don't want to lose mine. those. Yeah. Okay, they yeah. that one down. Oh, my God. I, I really hope you're doing okay, even though it seems like you are not. Well, don't worry about me. I'm running out of food, but in just a few weeks, I can start eating pumpkins off my neighbor's porch again. Okay, well, yeah, that's you good. bring that back! I was using that as pants! Oh, Mike, I, I, it seems like 
You got your hands full, so we'll check. You know what we'll do? We'll check back in another five months or so. Give it a Lupe! Okay, Lupe. thank you, Mr. Michael. Michael and Dell, everybody. He's, uh, he's on. He's going through some difficult times, but as you can see, he's quite blessed.